Rub up your engines! Today, I'm going to show you how to diagnose an oil burning car when nobody seems to be able to figure out why it's burning oil. I ain't going to use this fancy bore scope. Check it out. You can move it all around. It's by a company called Depth Stack. Since it moves like this, you don't have to keep wiggling and pulling and hope you get it in the right direction. You can stick it in the edge, you can move it all over the place. That's what I'm going to show you. But before I do, let me warn you that I guess you can't buy this thing anymore. The company Depth Stick, I looked all over, they do not sell this flexible one, which I really like. When you turn this, it flexes. I really like it. But for some weird reason, I can't even buy another one. They sent me this one and I love it. I've been trying it out, but now I can't even buy it. Instead, they're making similar ones that have three cameras, one on the top and one on each side, so you can see all around. Now they work too, you can see all around it, but I don't care. I like the flexible one better. So, Dapstick, please, we start selling your flexible bore scope again, because I like it. Now I realize there's a bunch of other companies out there selling flexible bore scopes. If they don't go out and sell it, you can buy it from somebody else, right? I like the flexible ones, and realize this. If you go back a decade or two, flexible bore scopes like this that doctors use, and aircraft engineers use, those things are five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars. And these things are like a couple hundred bucks or something, right? I don't know why they're not making this one, but I love it. I'm going to keep mine forever. Now, getting back to engines that burn oil, they can burn them for a lot of reasons. I'll show you the easy ones, but if it's not one of those, a lot of mechanics just throw their hands up and say, I don't know why it's just burning oil. I don't know. If the positive crankcase ventilation valve goes bad, it can suck oil in. Those things cost 15, 20 bucks. Just change them to start out. If that fixes it, what a cheap fix. Great. But if not, and you got an oil burner on your hand, the next thing to do is to do a compression test of the engine. You get an engine pressure tester, they don't cost much. That screws into the plug when you take the spark plug, and you do a compression test. Now, if your engine is really worn out, and the compression is really low, you know that the cylinders with low pressure, if they're all low, it's all worn out. But say three of the four have high and one is low, you know, that one has a problem, right? But there is a stinker to that when it comes to engines that burn oil because of this. Most pistons have three rings. Some have more, but basically they're mainly the three. The top one is the compression ring for the compression. That could be okay and you'll have good compression, but under it is another ring to wash the oil down, and then there's another one on the very bottom that's also a type of oil control ring. If the bottom rings are worn out that control the oil, the compression ring is okay. When you do a compression test, high compression, no problem. And you think, well, uh, the pistons aren't worn out. That doesn't mean they're not worn out because that pressure test doesn't test the bottom rings. It only tests the top pressure ring. I'll give you a perfect example. You can see a whole bunch of those 07 Camrys with the four cylinder engine that burn oil like mad, but they run okay. My grandson's got one, runs fine. He just has to add oil as it burns up, right? Because the compression rig's good and the car runs perfectly fine. Gets pretty much the same gas mods it always got. And of course, the only way to fix that is to rebuild the engine, which costs a small fortune. So, rather than guessing, here's a real easy way to test them. First thing you do is take the stupid beauty cover off. You remove the coil on plug, just on it. Pop it out of the way. And in this case, we gotta unplug it because there's not enough room. We'll get a pair of pliers. Squeeze it, wiggle it off, take out the coil on plug, and remove the spark plug. We'll just stick the spark plug socket in, and we'll remove the spark plug. And once we get the spark plug out, we get out the bore scope. Now we just turn it on, push the on button. There we go. And you can see it's starting to work. So we simply put it in the spark plug hole. 
and look around. See, you get a really clear picture inside here. And when you turn the knob, you can look inside the cylinder wall all around. See how it's all smooth? We can look all around. You can really get a good view of what's going on inside the engine. Look at that nice view. Now, this is my Toyota Matrix. It burns zero oil. It gets 37 miles a gallon of highway. It runs perfectly fine. I didn't expect to see anything wrong. Would have shocked me if I did. If you would have seen scored cylinder walls like in this picture, you would know that the middle ring or the bottom ring or both were worn out and they were scoring the side of the engine right and it's going to burn off. I've seen that a thousand times. A picture is worth a thousand words. You can do all kinds of computer scanning, variable compression tests, relative compression tests, you name it. But once you get inside the engine and you see that, then you know either you're going to have to rebuild that engine or you're just going to keep adding oil as long as it runs or you're going to get rid of the car. That's where scopes like these are really a phenomenal tool. Rather than tearing the whole engine down, you get a true analysis that you can see. You don't have to spend a fortune tearing the engine down. You can see what's wrong, then you can make a wise decision. Maybe I'll just keep driving, or maybe I'll rebuild it, or maybe I'll just get rid of the stupid thing and get another engine. There's no guesswork involved in this. These scopes, especially these fully articulating ones, to me they're phenomenal. And they look cool too. Da, 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 da. Over the past 56 years of my working on cars, I've seen more people get screwed over when either the mechanic says, well, there's nothing wrong with your car, and anybody can see this. Let's say you got a GM and it's burning a ton of oil, and they say, oh, they all do that, there's nothing wrong. All you have to do is remove the spark plugs, put in a bar scope, and those take videos and pictures too, so you can take pictures of it and then show them, look, the engine's worn out inside, it's still under warranty. You swines have to fix this thing under warranty. Don't tell me there isn't anything wrong. No one can argue with a picture. They can argue with data. They can argue with, oh, they all do that, but they can't argue with a picture of worn out parts that rather than having to take the whole engine apart, all you got to do is take out a spark plug, put it in one of those bore scopes that articulates like that one, so it's very easy to see, and take a snapshot on the machine, then show them. Now, of course, these bore scopes, hey, they got all kinds of usage. You got a leak in your AC system, but you can't see it. These little things are going to go all over the place. You can even shove them in your dash to see if you got a bad evaporator. It costs on some cars over a thousand bucks to change an evaporator, tear the dash apart. And that's just the labor, right? You can make sure using something like this, you can see a problem before you throw money away that's something that doesn't fix it. Now, of course, a good mechanic needs a really good scan tool. But as far as I'm concerned, these bore scopes, they allow you to scan around the car with your eyes to see problems that otherwise somebody might completely miss the ball and find out that, hey, your car's under warranty. They got to replace your engine. Pictures don't lie. They can't wheedle their way out of it. Now, whether you opt out for one that's got the nice adjustable head that you can turn, which I really like, or you get one that's got one or two or three cameras on them. They got all sorts out there. Now that's up to you. And if you're a cheapskate, you can even go on Amazon for like $16. You can get the cable and the camera and it will either plug into your smartphone or it'll go to it wirelessly. Now, the only thing I warn you about those are the apps often stink on those $19, $29 ones, and they don't work well, and the pictures are kind of grainy. You saw with this depth stick, it's got nice resolution. Plus, you can take single shots, you can take videos, so you can have actual proof of what's going on. I've even had customers use them where somebody charged them to put on a new part. I said, that's not a new part, here. And I'll take a picture of it, and then they'll put the picture on their camera, and they'll take it back to the guy who worked on the car and said, you said you replaced this part. You didn't replace that part, you lied to me, right? Nothing beats 
a picture, something you can see. They got so many uses that you would make your head spin, right? They're so inexpensive these days. I mean, those articulating ones, the one that I like, back in the day, those things were $7,500 to $15,000. Now you can get them for 200 something bucks, and you can get one with three cameras for $129 or so. And if you're like me, and you don't want to pay anybody to do anything, uh, you can stick them in your sink to see what's clogged up. You can get them with various length cords, see if your sewer system's clogged up, you got some kind of a leak, you can find leaks with them. They are extremely handy tools, and the modern ones, you can really see what you're looking at, and like I say, I happen to like the articulated one, because no matter what you're doing, do you want to be sitting there twirling the machine upside down looking around, or do you want to just sit there and hold it and go, on the little dial. Oh, move it here, move it there, move it there. You can't beat these things. So now you know how you can figure out why is an engine burning oil and no one seems to be able to figure it out. You won't get ripped off. And my advice is, if you fix things yourself, get some kind of bore scope. They are indispensable for being able to get into nooks and crannies. I mean, back in the day, in my father's day, he had a worn bore because the piston rings were worn. We would have to pull the head off the engine, look inside, that cost a lot of money. Then maybe you'd say, I don't want to rebuild the engine, it's too expensive, right? In this case, all it costs you is buying a bore scope. You can look at it, then you can decide. It's pretty bad looking. The engine's going to need to be rebuilt. But it runs okay now? Probably most people would just say, I'll either live with it and add oil and drive it till it drops, or I'll get rid of the thing now, it still runs good enough, and then away you go. You don't have to waste hundreds or thousands of dollars in diagnosis to find out what's wrong, then you get to make the choice by seeing it in front of you, not just some guy talking. We came to the conclusion that you need a modulator pump computer assembly, and that's going to be 2500 bucks, right? You can see this stuff on the screen. Then you can make a wise decision. And no, you're not getting ripped off. Or that, hey, maybe your mechanic is totally honest. He told you you needed the engine rebuilt, and he could show you with one of these. Stick it down there, say, look, it's wrecked inside. Then everyone is happy and everyone is above board. Because these days, car repair is extremely expensive. Most mechanics charge over 150 bucks an hour. Learn to do a few things like this yourself. Believe you me, you're gonna be a happy camper down the road. So if you never wanna miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.